I do have to point out the disclaimer. I work for the Miter Corporation. Since our entire business is based upon intellectual property, I need to state clearly that nothing I say represents any Miter Corporation position, opinion, or that of any of our customers. With that said, the author experienced recent graduate education that included didactic instruction requiring absolute adherence to the strictures of the specified writing style manual. However, this author was also admonished to never write in the first person, even having read copious textbooks and journal articles in which the first person was routinely used. The resulting cognitive dissonance led to the literature review and research presented in this paper. Nobody talks like that. It's true. Stupid APA. <laughs> well, we're going to get into that. <laughs> the story is, I really got ticked off at two-thirds <laughs> of my journal articles in my, in my literature review research, and half of the textbooks assigned wrote in the first person, and I was forbidden that. And then I looked at APA, which was our style manual, and it says to use the first person. So what I got was, well, yeah, you, you have to go with first person, except for this rule we don't like. So off on the side, in order to practice the APA style, really, this was, this was a practice paper for me that I did in the middle of the program that was never part of any course, never turned in until then. I researched what the real rules are according to the world of academic and publication research. And, of course, what I found out immediately is lots of people think that it's forbidden, you shouldn't use it, it's not academic writing. Except I kept seeing journal articles in very prestigious journals that used it. So I looked around and said, what are the major style guides that various schools uh, use? For the social sciences, it's generally the uh, APA, psychology. For the arts and humanities, it's the modern language art association, MOA. And for the science and technology, it is often, but not always, the IEEE. So from that, I stepped through each of the documents and said, what do they really say? The APA says, don't use the royal we, but do everything you can to do active voice instead of passive voice, and if it's a specific action taken by the author, use the first person. I, if it's a single author, we, if, if it's a team of authors, when that's an action. And in fact, there are multiple examples spread through the manual saying what's correct and what's incorrect, because it shows here, this is directly from the APA section 318, we conducted as opposed to was conducted by. So that's APA not only doesn't discourage, it, incur it actually specifies. We go into the Modern Language Association. It's at its surface more silent on the topic, although the first, the, the general rule is interpreted by a couple of the key online available resources, Purdue University's out. Uh, the online writing lab and Baker University both give some very good advice and their core advice is it's advisable to use it but the rule maker is the rules which is often the, the way many faculty go with that. We go over to IEEE. This gets really interesting. IEEE's core requirement specifies only how to do citations and references and for writing style and purpose it points you to Chicago. So now I started with three, I've added the Chicago Manual of Style, and I go research it. And as you can say, use, use the active voice, and let's see, a matter of style, passive voice is uh, discouraged. Now the other University of Chicago publication, which is very widely used, is Turabian. That also says, use it discriminately, use, use it appropriately. So that led me to some basic discussions or some basic conclusions. The third person is never mandated. The first person is never forbidden in any of the extant five major style guides and manuals that are out of use across the uh, universities. They all encourage use of the active voice. To do active voice, you pretty much have to go to first person when you're describing specific actions. They also, for the most part, say your advisor, your editor, your, your uh, publication journal, they rule. So this goes back to the rule that if, you're, if the advisor or the teacher says no first person, that's the rule, literally. However, APA doesn't simply allow. It says if you're going to do author action in order to maintain, go with the um, 
first person appropriately used. A royal we, but I researched, not the author. This was researched by the author. That's the crux of what's in the paper. It's a very short paper, and the reason that I submitted here and want to try to get it out is I'd like to open the discussion now. This is intentionally very short. I'd like this word to spread among faculty members, whether they are uh, looking at senior theses or master's or doctoral work, anything where you're looking for actual formal structure. Keep this in mind. Realize that the students are going to be seeing this in the real world. In the paper, I give some statistics on how many articles in a couple of selected journals use the first person, like two-thirds two or more in individual issues. Your students especially, I just finished school last year. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an old guy coming back to school. I live the bureaucracy conception. Feedback to the students. Those of us that have lived out in industry and business, inconsistency when you say, here's the rule book, you must follow the rule book. Inconsistency drives us nuts. So it's a small group in here. What I'd like to do is open up the discussion of how much do you do writing guides for your students that you're developing? And remember, APA is not just chapters six and seven. Chapters three, four, and five talk about how to write well. Mm -hmm. And very few of the teachers I'm aware of have actively pointed to that in developing not the ability to turn out research, but the ability to communicate that research. So with that, what I'd like to do is just open up for comments, discussion, however you'd like to go. I, I think it's a really interesting idea, because I am, I, I guess it would be old school, I really believe in the third person, and I teach my students that, because what I've seen, and this is an informal study, um, I've been teaching communication this past like, higher ed for about 12 years, 13 years, and as soon as I allow them to do the I, objectivity goes out the window, and it's all about what they think. Now that, I think, is an appropriate discussion to have. And uh, I will tell you, one of my professors in the process is sitting right there. And the well, it's interesting you bring that up, because for me, if I may, it, I, I don't mean this jokingly, even though it's gonna come out as a joke. For me, the, the forbidden, or the banning of, of first person is akin to like a five gram mushroom trip. It's all about ego death. Mm -hmm. Right, and you're forcing people to disconnect and maintain that right. objectivity, right. even though it's incredibly <laughs> awkward. See, I told you. Right. Yeah. 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 What's that? How old am I? I'm a big fan of Leary and McKenna. Yeah. <laughs> we'll explain. Right, but for me, even though it's incredibly awkward, and there's times where you want to say, especially to get away from the was mm -hmm. passiveness, especially in AK, trying to balance that, it forces, at least for me, in my experience, not only going through it, but in teaching people this forces that kind of, ah, I just have to disconnect from me right. and disassociate from that, that subjectivity that's inherent in research mm -hmm. and writing it, of any kind. You know, even coming, I have an undergrad in English literature, so I was more formalized with APA in a rhetorical sense, mm -hmm. not in an academic scholarly sense. Right, and another thing is, um, I was at a TED Talk, a TEDx event a couple years ago, and there, one of the speeches was about writing the passive voice in academic papers and why it's necessary because it creates that distance and it's, it's not, at that point, it's not about us, the researcher, it's about our data. Mm -hmm. and, right. and, and I'd like to, I'd like to even thing. though I've taken the position that if you're gonna declare a by God guide, follow it. Mm -hmm. I saw, um, I had quite a few co-ormates and classmates in the program that were not really strong writers. And I saw the ban total banning of the first person as protecting them from the misuse into the opinion. Mm -hmm. sure. and, and even APA, where it says, where it's very, very restricted. One, no royal we. We, the community, don't believe this. Mm -hmm. that, you know, that's, that's not right. Only when it's a specific author action is the first person appropriate. The opinions and conclusions need to be filtered out whether they're written in the active or passive voice because what you, you know, the opinions, I should say, the conclusions need to be based upon the combination of confirmed literature and your new results. That's appropriate. This, this does make it tougher, because this, this goes back to, as you're developing your students to be communicators of their research, in addition to being researchers, how do you help them most clearly communicate? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I really understood, and, and we were told, don't do this. I could see it was pre preventing stumbling into gross misuse of the first person. It, it did make it easier by just having a solid rule instead of a, it's okay in this case, but not for that case. 
Well, I think it's a lot of it's a, the pendulum swing kind of thing, that if you get back to bottom, that'd be great, but students and you know people in general have been working with the you know first person, I, we, et cetera, constantly, and trying to force them back to a careful, effective use is difficult. And so I find, especially with undergrad students, I force them all the way back to third person voice only, and, and just because they need to, they're so unfamiliar with it, and they yeah. so it's so uncomfortable for them, and I feel they have to work with that. Although I do, mm. when I work with actual mm. research projects, I do relax that after a while. After they've written the, the whole lit review section, because that should all be passive third person, and after they've you know, written you know, large sections, then it's like, okay, now there might be a chance. You know, in the conclusion, certainly, you might have some yeah. personal ideas that you want to share. Sure. But I try to get them to be really careful with it because they, they're just so, they're so familiar with that and, that and they'll run to the, it. The, the core rule that I brought out, which comes clearly through every one of them, the boss is the boss, what the boss says goes. And that, that can well, there's, be the yeah, there's house rules. Yeah. yeah it, it's an unfortunate side effect, actually, uh, because of the, the limitations of, of English, because this is being done in English, right? That the opposite effect, which I don't know if you've actually studied, but it's an idea, um, is it forces people into logical fallacies. Because they start personifying inanimate objects and they commit like yes. uh, logical fallacies of uh, category errors, okay. right? Where suddenly an inanimate object. Do what? What's that? If they do what? Oh, this this playing between first and third person. Yeah, and, you're just, and, 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 and let, let me go back to, if you haven't really read APA in a while, it actually has sections that talk about that because yeah. it talks about how the research concluded that. No, that's wrong. Exactly, that's a great example. And, and, and that comes directly from APA. Uh, that's why I'm saying read chapters three, four, and five. If, you, if you're using APA, understand what's in those chapters in addition to how to cite in the text and how to build your references. So, so many of the faculty only look at chapter six and seven. So when somebody tries to avoid saying, I did this, mm -hmm. or I analyzed the data, concrete example, right? I analyzed the data and these were, this is the result, right? Then they'll try, the researcher did this, and that's awkward as hell. See, I've just always written, the data was analyzed and. Right. Exactly. And, and, and that's the correct, that's the correct out of that. But in, sometimes I've seen people. The data took that. Well, yeah. see, but that, and that's the logical fallacy is data, if you're being right. out, if you're being really strict about it, right, that's a category error. Right. Right. And the results can't, of data analysis yeah. yeah. is. And so then it becomes a house rule. Yeah. What do you allow? Okay. If you're not going to allow the pronoun in the first person, and you're gonna say that we don't want the researcher said because it's awkward, then you're left with some kind of logical but fallacy. Still, yeah. I mean, I so you have to accept, it, it becomes this case so of just, what's the lesser evil. It seems and, like you can still say, this is what I found using I, and then give the reasons without using I. Yes, yes, right? and, and that's guiding improved writing on the part of the And Jason's great because like he said, he was, my wife, my wife has two English literature degrees also. They've really understood language, much more so than the guys who got an IT degree from UMUC undergrad and a master's from uh, uh, Southern New Hampshire online, and then they came to this program who have not had that level of writing development. You mentioned it a minute ago, and I, I just had to raise my hand because I have undergrads not in this field. APA isn't the only guy. No, that's why I studied so many different. I did IEEE, yeah, Chicago, Arabian. MLA. My wife lived by MLA and Turabian. She, yeah. she did all of her work. That, that was right. where she lived. And that's the whole reason that I looked at all of them. And AP is the only one that speaks strongly on this subject. But I'll also say the understanding, this goes back to something my dad told me years ago, know the real rules so that you know when it's appropriate to break them and can explain them. One of the real rules in APA, remember you, you got to step back, and APA is not for publication. APA is for manuscript submission. One of the rules in APA is no color plates. Jason and I both broke that rule with the approval of the faculty because we had meaningful data. Oh, I didn't ask permission, by the way. I just did it. <laughs> yeah, for the record. No, it was, it, was, it was de facto. I did the same thing. I said, here it is. I didn't ask. And I got but we both included color plates because it was meaningful for our uh, publications. But APA says specifically don't do that. Remember, APA was designed for manuscripts submitted to monochrome APA journals. The people who think that APA tells you how to prepare for final publication miss the point. Mm -hmm. For the record, I chaired about six doctoral students with color plates until I got caught and yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> my, my entire dissertation in Courier News. 
Ooh. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, but I, I hope you understand why I wanted to engender this discussion. And it sure. is intentionally real short, because the paper's three and a half pages, I mean, really. But it's, a lot, it's something that a lot of people haven't thought about. Well, the journal, the, the Journal of Information Tech System Education and the other one is just the same except the initials are different. Yeah. They, they insist you use the active voice. So mm -hmm. if there's no way around it other than use some kind of personal program, there sure. usually yeah. is, but nevertheless, that's one of their guidelines. And it's a guideline for the Wisconsin school system. Yeah. Well, I think, I think yeah. one, once you have become comfortable in writing, I think it's not an issue. I only I only enforce it, especially with undergrad students, although even a lot, a lot of times with master's students, just because when I see that they don't understand how to curb in or rein in their use of mm -hmm. the personal, then I just enforce it rigidly and doggedly, and then I have them, after they've you know done a almost final submission, then I say, okay, now go back, and in fact, I have them turn in everything but the conclusion. So they write everything minus the conclusion, and then I tell them, okay, now in the conclusion, mm -hmm. you can relax that one step. And also, if you want to go back in the man manuscript, if there's something you feel should be written that way, it can be, but I always make them write it third person only at first, and then go back and doc, you know, change it too if they need And I think that's a completely fair point. If, if, if you go back to maybe some of the critiques I gave you or other students mm -hmm. in your cohort, you know, when I ping people for, for using pronouns, it's not because the house will say not to, it's, it's for a lack of clarity of thought. Yes. Because I think ostensibly as a scientist, that's what's important to me. Not, not your pronoun or, or tense use, mm -hmm. it's your clarity of thought. If those things aren't getting in the way of me following your story, I really don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. If they're getting in the way, then I have to care. By the way, when I put this in, I had no clue Jason was gonna be here. It was after mm -hmm. the selections were announced. Small world, right? There. <laughs> and, and I really appreciate him being, being here for, to be part of this discussion because this is part of the reality of really developing the student's writing ability and being able to communicate clearly. So you have maybe five minutes. Well, I think so because I mean, at least all the universities I've taught at, as a full, either full time or adjunct, we have a requirement for writing across the curriculum, yeah. and that has to be demonstrated. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's to induce clarity of thought and communication. Um, I would also say if you really want total consistency um, for writing, good luck. The English good language <laughs> doesn't allow no, for total consistency of anything, yeah, no, and I, I so agree. well, it's full of idiom and metaphor, and right. yeah. And, and if you looked at the paper, it stops with the, this is what I found in the literature, and here are the conclusions from reading the literature. But this is the discussion I'm hoping it generates in various places. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. But a lot of our students will be practitioners, and so case studies is another genre um, mm -hmm. that's maybe more like what they're going to be doing in their jobs. And yeah. I would expect personal pronouns to be there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and case study, absolutely. I think your point is not that, it's that people shouldn't use them, but that they should at least know how not to use them. I, I, <laughs> right. Well, especially like if you're going to do a literature review, even, even a case study. If you go through first and do some literature review and then do a case study that responds to that, you should be disciplined to do the literature review in third person because you're really looking at other people's things. There shouldn't be, other than it's something like, at once I analyze that data or something, you know, but it's... Well, you know, a lot of case studies are designed to give you just limited information. Mm -hmm. Guess what you got to make the decision to justify yeah. if you're not even doing a literature review. Yeah. Right, and if so, then yeah, that's expected to be. I made it a point to to in the paper talk about how when I went to IEEE and it was limited, I then intentionally said, I then reviewed Chicago and Turabian, and I was the first person there very tightly to my next step in that in my process because of that mm -hmm. to to show to show to demonstrate that just by action. And the hope is that every student thinks of it, you know, when they use it, they stop themselves and wait, wait a second, do I have a good justification there? Yeah. We're at two minutes. Uh, the discussion is yours. Uh, I mean, the last thing I would say is, to me, standing back rationally, it stands the reason that if our standard across all the, the writing style guides, more or less is when you report on existing research, and it's in this format. And that's rather standardized, apart from the citation notation itself, right? Mm -hmm. it, why shouldn't it be standardized that if you're talking about your stuff, which is decoupled from that, and it needs to be distinct in the clarity of communication that you should be able to use first person, right? Mm -hmm. You're carefully distinguishing what you did versus what everybody right, else Right, because that did. in and of itself is the way to distinguish it yeah. in English. I'm, I'm, I'm curious how you would handle one issue. I'm just beginning to get a little bit puffed. The, the researcher who has multiple publications built into the research program, is it appropriate when they cite an earlier work 
and they're now building on that. Say in 1982, I recorded that. I don't. No. I, I, I just, that's that, that that was published at that point. I would say, yeah. you know, the, you know, I, I I would I would stay third person. I, I would only okay. say if it's something that I was doing now as I'm doing this current project, I would use the. Yeah, I don't even have an opinion on the answer to that. that well, just what about me. multiple authors? They're they're unique to do a, a standard citation, I believe. Is the author. No, I mean as far as when you're writing a paper. Oh, you know, if, if the if the authors together, and and this is what APA says, if it's multiple authors and it's a specific action that the author team did, you say we. Right, but if it, it's like one of the authors was part of you know writing something in the past, I would say you know one of the authors yes. was teamed with you know whatever right. and yeah, and, exactly. and cited because but if it was somebody that was being done currently, then yes, I would use the yeah. I or we or whatever. I think we're but down to the time limit. Yeah. Yeah. We've got one more speaker. So, I don't want to talk so thank you, everybody. That